Um, we are all familiar with the passage in Haggadah which records a dispute between Ben Zoyma and the Chachamim. And the dispute concerns the mitzvah uh, to remember it, to, the mitzvah known as Zechiras Yetzias Mitzrayim. There's a mitzvah to remember to mention the Exodus every day. And we fulfill that mitzvah by reciting the final paragraph of the Shema, which concludes with the words, Ani Hashem Alekechem, I am Hashem, your God, Asher, Tesi, Eschem, Eretz, Mitzrayim, who took you out of Egypt. And the dispute between Ben Zoma and the Chachamim um, concerns this mitzvah. The Pasuk, as we all know, as we're all familiar with, the Pasuk says, Leman Tizka, Eschem, Tizka, Me'eretz, Mitzrayim, Kolim, Echayecha, that you have to, Remember, you have to mention the Exodus all of the days of your life. And both Ben Zoma and the Chachamim agree that there's a mitzvah to mention the Exodus every day. The dispute, they argue about when there's also a mitzvah to remember the Exodus at night. According to Ben Zoma, we learn from the extra word, kol yemei chayecha, all of the days of your life. That includes also nighttime. There's a mitzvah to mention the Exodus both during the day and at night. Whereas according to the Chachamim, there's no, only a mitzvah at the daytime. There's no mitzvah to mention the Exodus at night. The word kol is coming to tell me something else. The word kol is lahavi nimois hamashiach. There's also a mitzvah to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, to remember the Exodus, even in the days of Mashiach. Therefore, they dispute whether what concerns us, they dispute whether there's a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim also at nighttime. Now, although in general, when there's a dispute between the Chachamim and an individual, we rule in accordance with the Chachamim, on this occasion, um, we rule in accordance with Ben Zoyma, the Rambam Paskins like Ben Zoyma, that there's a mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, both in the day and at night. And that's our practice. As I, as, I, as, we, as I said at the beginning of the year, we fulfill this mitzvah by reciting the final paragraph of the Shema. We recite the final paragraph of the Shema uh, both in the daytime and at nighttime. So that's the halacha. The halacha is there's a mitzvah of Zechir HaSetzias Nitzrayim to mention the Exodus both during the day and also at night. The question that I wish to discuss is whether this mitzvah applies also to women. We know as a general rule that women are exempt from time-bound mitzvahs. Women are exempt from mitzvah saseh, shazman grama, from time-bound mitzvahs. Therefore, they're exempt from listening to the shoifar. They're exempt from sitting in the sukkah or shaking lulav. Are they exempt also from the mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, of mentioning the Exodus every day. So that seems to be obvious that according to the Chachamim, who say that the mitzvah is only during the day and not at night, that this mitzvah is a time-bound mitzvah. It only applies during the day. It does not apply at night. The question is, what about Lefi Ben Zoyma? According to Ben Zoyma, there's a mitzvah to mention the Exodus both during the day and at night. And as we said, we rule in accordance with Ben Zoma. According to this, is the mitzvah of Zechir HaSitziyah Mitzrayim a time-bound mitzvah or not? The Morgan Avram, one of the most important commentators on the Shulchan Aruch, he says that it's not a time-bound mitzvah. Why? A time-bound mitzvah means that sometimes you're obligated in the mitzvah and sometimes you're not obligated in the mitzvah. The mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the mitzvah mentioned in the Exodus, according to Ben Zoma, one is always obligated in the mitzvah. One is obligated every day, both in the morning and at night. There's no time in a person's life where he is exempt from the mitzvah. And therefore, the Morgan Avram states that um, it is classified as a mitzvah which is not time bound, and therefore women are obligated in the mitzvah. This is the opinion of the Morgan Avram. Seems quite reasonable. The Shagas Aryeh um, 
argues fiercely with the Mogan Avram, and he says a very compelling argument. True, there's no time in one's life where he's exempt from the midst of Zechir Asitzias Mitzrayim. In the day, he's obligated. In the night, he's obligated. However, we look at the, mit at, at, at the mitzvah as two separate mitzvahs. There's a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the day, and there's a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim at night. The mitzvah in the day can only be fulfilled at the daytime. If a person neglected his obligation to remember the exodus, to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the day, that it's too late. He, he, it's too late. He can no longer fulfill it the following evening. The, the obligation to mention their exodus, to remember Tzias Mitzrayim in the morning, is a separate in the day, is a separate obligation to the mitzvah to mention Tzias Mitzrayim at night. And therefore, rather than being one, uh, one whole mitzvah, which is not time bound, the Shagas Ari understands that it's in fact two separate, almost two separate mitzvahs. There's a mitzvah to mention. Yitzhiyaz Mitzrayim at day, which has to be said by during the day and cannot be said at night. Therefore, it's time bound. And there's another mitzvah to mention the Exodus at night, which has to be said at night and cannot be said during the day. And therefore, it's not classified as, it, and, and therefore, it is classified as a time bound mitzvah. So we now have a dispute between the Morgan Avram on the one hand, who understands that the mitzvah is not a time bound mitzvah, and therefore women are obligated, since there's no moment in a person's life where he is freed from this obligation. A person is constantly obligated to mention the Exodus. He's obligated every morning and every evening. Therefore, the Morgan Avram understands it is not a time bound mitzvah. Women are obligated. It's a constant mitzvah. Whereas according to Shagas Ari, we look at each component of the mitzvah separately. The mitzvah to mention the exodus during the day is a time bound mitzvah. It has to be said at, during the day, cannot be said at night. And the mitzvah to mention the exodus at night is also time bound. It ha must be said at night it it, and not during the day. The dispute between the Mogan Avram and the Shagas Ari plays itself out um, in another case. And I'll give a brief introduction. We have a mitzvah of Kriya Shema Shachris Va'aris. We have a mitzvah to recite Kriya Shema both in the morning, both in the day and at night, in the morning and in the evening. Until when in the morning can one um, fulfill his mitzvah of Kriya Shema? And until when in the evening can a person fulfill his mitzvah of Kriya Shema? Well, there are different opinions in the Gemara, but we rule as follows. Kriya Shema in the morning can, can only be recited until the end of the third halachic hour. So I live in Ramat B'Chemesh, and it's around 9.40, that's the, 940 in the morning is the end of the third halachic hour. That is the, uh, a person, uh, from then onwards, a person can no longer recite Kriya Shema. Kriya Shema has to be recited before the end of the third halachic hour. That's the Kriya Shema of the daytime. Kriya Shema at nighttime, however, at least Min HaTorah, at least on the biblical level, can be recited the entire night. So that sounds quite reasonable. However, if we look at the source, what's the, what's the source of this, these halachas? What's the source of these laws? The Torah says, which we recite as part of Kriya Shema, V'dibar Tobam, you shall speak about these words, you shall recite Kriya Shema, Etc. When you go, when you lie down, when you go to sleep, and when you wake up. So the Gemara understands b'shach b'cha, when you lie down, means calls man adam As long as people are lying down, as long as people are asleep, since people are asleep the whole night, therefore create the, the zman, the time of the evening shema can be, is, the entire night. But the Torah also says that the morning Kriya Shema must be recited, Uv Kumecha, when you wake up. And, and the, the Mishnah and the Gemara says that the latest time that people wake up is 
by the end of the third hour. The Bnei Melochim, the princes, they are the latest people to wake up. They get up at the, at, during the third hour. And therefore, the, the, um, the, the latest time, which is classified as Uv Kumecha, as a time of getting up, is the end of the third hour. So the Kesa Mishnah asks, Kesa Mishnah is, was authored by um, Rabbi Yusuf Kairo, who was the author of the Shulchan Aruch, and it's his commentary on the Rambam. And he, he asked the following question. There seems to be an inconsistency in the way we inter- that we interpret the Pasuk. The word b'shoch b'cha, when you lie down, we interpret to mean not the action of going to sleep, but the state of being asleep. B'shoch b'cha, as long as people are asleep. Well, if we if we want to be consistent, then we should also say that uv kumecha means as long as people are awake, which is the in- entire day. And the flip side is that if we interpret uv kumecha as not when people are awake, but when people get up, which is until the end of the third hour, then by the same token, we should say that b'shoch b'cha does not mean when people are asleep, but it's when people go to sleep, which is only at the beginning of the night. So how can it be that b'shoch b'cha is interpreted as when people are asleep, and uv kumecha is interpreted as when people, rather than being interpreted as when people are awake, is interpreted, interpreted as when people get up. This is the question of the Kesef Mishnah. So the Kesef Mishnah answers, and this is a tremendous chiddish that me, many, if most poskim argue with, that indeed, at least biblically, the mitzvah of Kriya Shema in the day is the whole day. That means, in the same way that we explain b'shoch b'cha as meaning when people are asleep, we also say that uv kumecha means when people are awake. And therefore, just like the Krishma in the evening can be said the entire night, so Krishma in the morning or the, can be said the entire day. The entire day is the time when people are awake. That which the Gemara limits the time of Kriyashma till the end of the third hour is a rabbinic uh, din or a, a rabbinic law. But biblically, the, the Kriyashma of day can be said the entire day. Kriyashma at night can be said the entire night. This is the opinion of the Kesab Mishnah. And as I said, but as I said, most poskim argue with the Kesab Mishnah. Most poskim, if not all poskim, uh, maintain that the Kriyashma of day can only, even on a biblically level, even on a biblical level, can only be recited until the end of the third, of, of the third hour. And the Mogan Avram, when he, when he cites the Kesa Mishnah, aunt, aunt asks a few questions on his, uh, on the Kesa Mishnah. But, but I will, uh, but this is one of the questions, which is relevant to our discussion. Says the Mogan Avram, according to the Kesa Mishnah, that the Kriyashma of day is recited the whole day, and the Kriyashma of night is recited the whole night. That means that every moment in a person's life, he's obligated, he's, he has an obligation to recite Kriyashma. There's no time in a person's life where, he, where, where he's freed from this obligation, where, he, where, he, where, there's, where he's exempt from this obligation. The whole, the whole day, he, he has an obligation, and the whole night, he has an obligation. If so, says the Mogan Avram, then Kriya Shema should not be classified as a mitzvah seishas man grama. Mitzvah seishas man grama, time bound mitzvah, means by definition, there's a time when you are obligated, there's a time when you're not obligated. According to the Kesef Mishnah's understanding of Kriya Shema, the, according to Kesef Mishnah's understanding of reciting Shema, it should not be classified as a time bound mitzvah because a, a, a person is always obligated in this mitzvah the entire day and the entire night. And based on this question and others, the Mogan Avram rejects the position of the Kesav Mishnah, and that indeed biblically, even on a biblical, even on a biblical level, Kriyashma can only be recited until the end of the third hour. Now, the Shagas Arye, the same uh, protagonist that we had um, earlier, although he agrees to the Mogan Avram 
that the halacha does not follow the Kesav Mishnah, he disagrees with the Mogan Avram's objection to the Kesav Mishnah's position. True, even, says, the, says the Shagasari, even if it would be true that the mitzvah of Kriya Shema can be recited all day and all night, that would not deem it a mitzvah sisha, as mangroma, that would not deem it to be a time bound mitzvah. Why? Because we would consider each, instead of looking at the mitzvah as a whole and saying that the mitzvah of Kriya Shema as a whole always applies, there's no time where you, of the day where a person is freed from this obligation. Nevertheless, if we look at each component separately, uh, it is a it is a time bound mitzvah. If we look at the at the daytime kriya shema, it can only be said at the day, and it cannot be said at night. And if we look at the nighttime kriya shema, it can only be said at night, and it cannot and it cannot be said during the day. So true, as a whole, perhaps we could understand that that kriya shema always applies. But if we look individually at, at, at each component individually. The morning Kriya Shema or the daytime Kriya Shema is time bound. It only applies during the day. It does not apply during the night. And the nighttime Kriya Shema is time bound. It only applies at night. It does not apply during the day. So we see uh, uh, the, the positions of the Mogan Avram and the Shagas Ari co consistently, uh, they, they, they um, their, their, their opinions are consistent also in this case. That means to say, we've, we've now examined two cases where there's a dispute between the Mogan Avram and the Shagasari. One concerns the mitzvah of Zechira Yitzias Mitzrayim, the mitzvah of mentioning Yitzias Mitzrayim, and one concerns the mitzvah of Kriya Shema according to the understanding of the Kesef Mishnah. Zechira Yitzias Mitzrayim, according to the Mogan Avram, is not a time-bound mitzvah, because the mitzvah applies all the time, both during the day and during the night. Similarly, the Morgan Avram understood that the Kesav Mishnah's version of Kriya Shema, where Kriya Shema applies both during the day and during the night, is also not a time-bound mitzvah, because we look at Zechira Sitzir Sitzrayim as a whole, and as a whole, the mitzvah always applies. There's no time where you're exempt from the mitzvah. And similarly, we would look at Kriya Shema as a whole. There's there's no time where, where, where you're exempt from the mitzvah. In contrast, the Shagasari understood that both of these mitzvahs would be considered a time-bound mitzvah, because rather than looking at the mitzvah as a whole, we look at each, com each at, at, at the components of the mitzvah individually. That means that both Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim and the, the, the Kesef Mishnah's version of, of Kriya Shema would be considered a time-bound mitzvah. Since the mitzvah which is to be, formed, to be performed during the day has to be performed during the day and cannot be performed at night, that's a time-bound mitzvah. And the, the, the mitzvah which has to be, the, the mitzvah to recite, to mention Yitzhiyaz Mitzrayim at night or to recite Kriya Shema at night has to be said at night and cannot be performed during the day. That means if a person neglected his obligation to recite it at night and the daytime comes, it's too late, he's missed his mitzvah. That means that the nighttime mitzvah and the daytime mitzvah, each of those two components are time bound. And therefore says, argues the Shagas Ari, both of these mitzvahs would yes be defined and classified as a time bound mitzvah and women would be exempt. These are two mitzvahs where we've explored a dispute between the Mogin Avram and the Shagasari. And now we'll move to a third mitzvah, a third case where they also appear to have the same dispute. The Mogan Avram brings a proof to his opinion. The Mogan Avram cites the ruling of the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says that women are obligated in the mitzvah of tefillah, the mitzvah of, of prayer, because prayer is a time-bound mitzvah. That's what the Shulchan Aruch writes. Now, at first glance, it seems quite uh, uh, astounding. How can, how can prayer be a time-bound mitzvah? There's shacharis, which must be recited during the morning. There's mincha, which must be recited during the afternoon. And there's ma'ariv, which must be recited at night. How can we understand the Shulchan Aruch's ruling 
that tefillah, that prayer, is, a, is not a time-bound mitzvah, and that therefore women are obligated. Surely it should be obvious that shachris, mincha, mariv, the three components of prayer, each of them are time-bound. Must be, argues the Magen Avram, that we see from here that we, when, when we have a mitzvah comprised of several components, we don't look at each component individually. We don't look, we don't take our magnifying glass and look at shacharis by itself, a mincha by itself, a mara by itself. No, we take a step back and we look at the mitzvah as a whole. There's a mitzvah called prayer. There's a mitzvah called tzvila. And the mitzvah is to daven three times a day. And every day of a person's life, a person has obligation to daven three times a day. That means, argues the Mogan Avraham, that we see from here that uh, that such a mitzvah, a, a, a mitzvah which, when, when you take the sum of it of its parts, it's always it always applies, and there's no break in the mitzvah. It is it is classified as a mitzvah which is not time bound. Tzvilah, since when you take its its three component parts of shachas min chamari, that uh, the the entire day a person has an obligation of prayer. Uh, Therefore, it is not considered a time-bound mitzvah. And from here, the Morgan Avram proves his opinion vis-a-vis Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim that since the mitzvah as a whole applies the whole time, there's no time in the day, of, there's no time in a person's life where he can say, I have no obligation of Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim because in the morning a person has a mitzvah and in the nighttime a person has the mitzvah. Therefore, similar to tefillah, similar to prayer, where there's no time in a person's life where he's, where he's exempt from the obligation of prayer, that's also considered, uh, we, we, just like the Shulchan Aruch rules, that prayer is not a time-bound mitzvah and women are obligated. Similarly, Zechir Sitzias Mitzrayim will also not be considered a time-bound mitzvah and women will be obligated. This is the proof, this is how the Mogan Avram proves his opinion. This obviously is a bit, is a question on the Shagasari. The Shagasari says, when we have a mitzvah which is comprised of several components, we do look at each component separately, and we and we deem each component to be a time bound mitzvah. So how does the Shagasari understand Shulchan Aruch's ruling that tefillah, that prayer, is not time bound? Surely, if, if if we look at each component individually, we look at each component separately. Shacharis is time bound. Mincha is time bound, and Marv is time bound. How can the Shulchan Aruch rule that tefillah is not a time bound mitzvah? This is a question on the Shagasari. So Shagasari himself deals with this question, and he says as follows that you've misunderstood the Shulchan Aruch. The source of the Shulchan Aruch that tefillah is not a time bound mitzvah is the Rambam. And the Rambam writes as follows. That Minat Torah, on a biblical level, a person has to daven once a day. How a person davens, when a person davens, how many times a person davens, that's not mandated by the Torah. That, the, the, a, a person is free to daven when and how he likes. The Chachamim, the rabbis came and they, and they uh, created a rigid form of tefillah that says how we daven, what we say, how many times a day that we daven. But there's a difference, says the Rambam, between the biblical mitzvah on its pu- in its purest sense, which is daven how you like, when you like. As long as you daven once a day, you fulfill the biblical mitzvah. And the rabbinic mitzvah, which breaks the mitzvah into, uh, breaks it down into a, a rigid form of what we say and when we say it. Says the Shagasari, when the Shulchan Aruch says, that tefillah is a time-bound mitzvah, it doesn't mean that shacharis, mincha, marav is time-bound. It doesn't mean that the rabbinic form of the mitzvah is time-bound. It is not, sorry. It doesn't mean that the shacharis, mincha, marav is not time-bound. It doesn't mean that the rabbinic form of the mitzvah is not time-bound. That obviously is time-bound. And obviously women would be exempt from the rabbinic uh, form of tefillah. When the Shulchan Aruch writes, that women are obligated in tefillah, it means, based on the Rambam, it means that women are obligated in the biblical form of tefillah. The biblical form of tefillah, which is 
however, which, which uh, there's no restrictions or regulations of when and how you daven, it's just daven once a day, that clearly is not a time of mitzvah. Every single day of a person's life, a person has to offer a prayer to Hashem, a person has to pray to Hashem. That mitzvah of tefillah, in the, in the purest, simple, biblical sense, is not time-bound, and therefore women are obligated. So we've explored three cases of dispute between where the, between where the Shagas Ari and the Mogan Avram argue fundamentally on whether a mitzvah is defined as a time-bound mitzvah. They argue about whether Zechiras Yetzias Mitzrayim is time-bound. They argue about, according to the Kesef Mishnah, that Kriya Shema is recite, can be recited all day and all night. Is that a time-bound mitzvah? And they appear to argue also whether, whether Tfila, whether the, the obligation of Shachras Mincha Mariv, the, the, the three prayers, is that a time-bound mitzvah or not? The Mogna Avram looks at the mitzvah as a whole. We don't look at each individual component of the mitzvah. The mitzvah as a whole applies the whole time. Zichir Asiyah Mitzrayim applies the whole time. Kriya Shema, according to the Kesef Mishnah, applies the whole time. And prayer applies, tefillah applies the whole time. And therefore, it's, there's no time where you're freed from the, from the obligation of, of any of these mitzvahs. Therefore, it's not classified as a time-bound mitzvah, and women are obligated. According to Shagas Ari, however, all of these mitzvahs are, are deemed to be a time-bound mitzvah. Why? Because rather than looking at the mitzvah as a whole and saying that the mitzvah as a whole, a person is always obligated in that mitzvah, rather we look at each component of the mitzvah, and each component of the mitzvah has a certain time. Zechir HaSitzir's name of, day, of the day has to be recited during the day. Zechir HaSitzir's time of the night has to be recited only during the night. And therefore, once we break down all of these mitzvahs into their individual components, then indeed they are all classified as a time-bound mitzvah. So we began the shir, uh, try, coming to investigate, is the mitzvah of Zechir HaSitzir's Mitzrayim a time-bound mitzvah, which is relevant to uh, determining where the women are exempt from this mitzvah or, the ob or obligated in the mitzvah. So far, we can conclude um, that it is subject to a dispute between the Mogan Avram and the Shagas Ari. According to the Mogan Avram, it is not considered a time-bound mitzvah. Women are obligated. According to Shagas Ari, it is considered a time-bound mitzvah. We look at the, each individual component of the mitzvah, and therefore women uh, will be exempt. Those are the two opinions that we have explored so far. But there's a third opinion, and that is the opinion of the Mogin Giborim. And the Mogin Giborim, who's also, one, also a commentator on the Shulchan Aruch, he argues as follows. Even if we accept the opinion of the Shagasari that Zechiras Yitzias Mitzrayim is a time-bound mitzvah, and therefore, in principle, women should be exempt, nevertheless, there are, there are still grounds to suggest that women will be obligated in this mitzvah. How so? So, although in general, although in general, women are, are exempt from time-bound mitzvahs, there are various exceptions. Three of those exceptions are as follows. The Gemara says that women are obligated in the mitzvah of the four cups or, on Seder night. Secondly, the Gemara says that women are obligated in the mitzvah of Megillah, of Mikra Megillah, to listen to the Megillah. And thirdly, the Gemara says that women are obligated in the mitzvah of Ner Chanukah. Three mitzvahs, the four cups, the Megillah, and lighting Chanukah candles. Why are women obligated in these three mitzvahs? Surely uh, they are time-bound mitzvahs, and we have a general rule that women are exempt from time-bound mitzvahs. The Gemara invokes, invokes, the Gemara invokes the following principle. Af hein hayu hanes. They too were included in the miracle. That means to say that any mitzvah which comes to mark or to come to commemorate a miracle, and women were also beneficiaries of that miracle, 
women will be obligated in that mitzvah. So the four cups of wine which come to celebrate the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, which come to celebrate the exodus from Egypt, women were also freed from slavery in Egypt. And therefore, they, they are also obligated in the mitzvah of drinking the four cups. And similarly with Megillah and Hanukkah, since these mitzvahs um, commemorate the fact that we were saved from Haman's decree or that we were freed from uh, Greek rule, women were also uh, benefited and were, were part of these miracles. And therefore, they are also obligated in those mitzvahs which commemorate those miracles. That is what the Gemara says. Therefore, suggests the Mogin Giborim, even if we will accept that Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, even if we accept that the mitzvah of, of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a time-bound mitzvah, but let's invoke the same principle that the Gemara states, that Afhein Oyubo any miracle that commemorates, sorry, any mitzvah that commemorates a miracle which women were part of, which women were part of, they are also obligated in that mitzvah. And therefore, but according to that principle, they should also be obligated in the mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, which it too is clearly a mitzvah which um, commemorates and marks um, the exodus from Egypt. This is the suggestion of the Mogin Gibori. E even if we will say that Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a time-bound mitzvah, like the Shagus Ari wanted to contend, nevertheless, they should be obligated based on the principle of Afhein Hoyu Ba'usyanis, that they were included in the miracle. Now, it sounds very convincing. Nevertheless, it's not straightforward. And that is because the Rishonim dispute this, the, the scope of this principle of Afhein Hoyu Ba'usyanis. And explain what I mean. Toysus in Psachim asked the following question. As we know, women are exempt from the mitzvah of sukkah. Sukkah is a time-bound mitzvah, and women are like all or most time-bound mitzvahs. Women are exempt from sitting in the sukkah. Asked Toysus, but the mitzvah of sukkah commemorates the fact that Hashem protected us with his Ananiya Kovid, Hashem protected us with his clouds of glory. He didn't just protect the men. He protected the women as well. So if this mitzvah comes to commemorate the miracle, which women were also part of, so why do we say they're exempt from this mitzvah? They should be obligated in this mitzvah. No different to drinking the four cups of wine or listening to the Megillah or lighting Hanukkah candles. Why then does, do, do we say, why do we rule that women are exempt from the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah? That is Tosa's question. And because of this question, Toysus establishes the following principle. The, 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 the principle of Afin Hoyuba Isanes, that women are obligated in those mitzvahs which commemorate miracles which they were which they were beneficiaries of, is only true concerning a mitzvah to Rabbonin, is only true concerning a rabbinic mitzvah, like uh, lighting the Hanukkah candles, or listening to the Megillah, or drinking the four cups of wine. All of these are rabbinic mitzvahs. In rabbinic mitzvahs, there's a, there, there's a general rule that of afinoi ba'usanes, that mitzvahs which commemorate miracles that women were beneficiaries of, they are also obligated in those mitzvahs. But sukkah, sitting in the sukkah, which is a mitzvah deraisa, which is a biblical mitzvah, in a biblical mitzvah, we do not apply the principle of afinoi ba'usanis. On a biblical mitzvah, even though the mitzvah comes to commemorate a miracle which women were beneficiaries of, we will not obligate them based on the principle of afinoi ba'usanis. So if we take uh, this opinion of Toysavis, then it's what the, the suggestion of the Magen Giborim is not true. The mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the mitzvah of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, is a biblical mitzvah. It's, a, it's learned from a verse. And according to Toysus, on a biblical mitzvah, we do not invoke the principle of Afein Hoyu Ba'usanes, and therefore it will remain 
in, in the default position of being a time-bound mitzvah, which women are exempt. However, there are those who dispute this um, principle that Tosis established. Tosis established that biblical mitzvahs are not subject to the rule of afin oibayusanes. They're not subject to the rule that women are obligated if it commemorates a, a nace, uh, and commemorates a miracle which they were beneficiaries of. There are those who argue and say even a biblical mitzvah is, is yes, subject to this principle. Where do we see this? There's a Torah in Megillah that asks the following question. As we know, women are obligated in the mitzvah of eating matzah. Why are women obligated in the midst of eating matzah? Surely it's a time-bound mitzvah. So the Gemara says, because the Torah equates the midst of eating matzah to the prohibition of eating chametz. And from here we derive that anyone who is prohibited from eating chametz has an obligation to eat matzah. Meaning there's a, there's a special verse to tell us that despite the fact that it's a time-bound mitzvah, nevertheless, um, women are obligated in the midst of eating matzah. Ask Tosa the question, why do I need a special verse to tell me that women are obligated in the midst of eating matzah? Let's just invoke the general rule of afhein hoyu ba'isahanes, that since matzah, eating matzah, as we say in the Haggadah, commemorates the exodus from Egypt, it commemorates a miracle that women were part of. Therefore, um, even without a special pasuk, we should say that they're obligated in the mitzvah. So if we pause here, so if we pause here, we can we can clearly see that Tosis is arguing, Tosis in Megillah, who's asking this question, is clearly arguing with the Tosis, the first Tosis that I quoted before. According to the opinion in Tosis that the mitzvah of Afin Hoyu Boisanis does not apply to biblical mitzvahs, it only applies to rabbinic mitzvahs then the question is a non-starter. Why do you need a special posuk to tell me that women are obligated in the midst of matzah? Let's just invoke the principle of afin hoi boisanis. The answer is obvious. Eating matzah is a biblical mitzvah. If eating matzah is a biblical mitzvah, the principle of afin hoi boisanis does not apply. Toysvus in Megillah, who did ask this question and, didn't, and did not give this answer, clearly understood that the mitzvah applies even, the, the principle, sorry, the principle of Avi Noi Boisanis applies even to biblical mitzvahs. So now we have a dispute regarding the scope of this idea, of this concept of Avi Noi Boisanis. Which mitzvahs can we obligate, which mitzvahs which, that commemorate mir miracles can we obligate women in? According to one opinion, we can only obligate them in rabbinic mitzvahs. According to another opinion, we can obligate them even in biblical mitzvahs. So the suggestion of the Mogin Giborim to say that even if Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim is classified as a mitzvah seishas mangrama, is classified as a time-bound mitzvah, nevertheless, we can still obligate women based on the principle of Afinoi Boisanis, will depend on these two opinions in Toysavus, according to one opinion, according to the opinion that only applies to a biblical mitzvah, they will be, uh, that only applies, sorry, to a rabbinic mitzvah, then it will remain, which is a biblical mitzvah, will remain a time-bound mitzvah and they will be exempt. According to the opinion that Afin Hoi Ba'isanes applies even to biblical mitzvahs, that means that biblical mitzvahs which commemorate miracles we can obligate women in, then the Mogan Avram's suggestion will be indeed correct. Even if we would accept that it's a time-bound mitzvah, we will still maintain that women will be obligated because of the principle of Afhenoi Boisanes, because the principle that any mitzvah that commemorates a miracle which they were beneficiaries of, they will be obligated in. So just to sum up the uh, conclusion uh, of this shaila, of this um, question. Are women obligated in the mitzvah of Zechir Sitzias Mitzrayim? There's basically three perspectives on this question. 
According to Mogan Avram, they're obligated because we consider it to be that it's not a time a time bound mitzvah. Since the mitzvah as a whole always applies, there's no break in the mitzvah, therefore it's not a time bound mitzvah. That's the view of the Mogan Avram. The second is the view of the Shagasari. The Shagasari maintains that it is a time bound mitzvah. Since each component of the mitzvah is time bound, the, morn, the daytime is, 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 a, is an obligation of the daytime. The nighttime is an obligation of the nighttime. The daytime you have to fulfill specifically in the daytime and not the nighttime. The nighttime you have to fulfill specifically in the nighttime and not the daytime. Therefore, it is, it is considered time by mitzvah. And women will be exempt. And the, the final perspective is that of the Mogin Giborim, who, uh, who maintains that even if we consider it to be a time bound mitzvah. Nevertheless, we can invoke the principle of Afik Noi Boisa Nes, that a mitzvah which commemorates a miracle which, which women were beneficiaries of, women are also obligated in that mitzvah. But as we said, it will depend on the dispute, the, the different opinions in Toysavis as to whether this can only be used to obligate women in rabbinic mitzvahs like the cases we see in the Gemara of the four cups, the Megillah and Hanukkah candles, or it can even be you, in which case, the, the Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim mentioning the Exodus, which is a, a biblical mitzvah, they will remain exempt, like the, de the default position of a time down mitzvah. Or if we understand like the opinions in Toysavis that the, 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 this principle applies even to a biblical mitzvah, then we can suggest that despite the fact that it's a time bound mitzvah, we will invoke the principle of Afinoi Baisanes to obligate women in this mitzvah. That is the end of uh, this discussion. One further point, as we mentioned, the reason why we're discussing this mitzvah of Zechir Sitzias Mitzrayim is because it's based on the passage which we read in the Haggadah, the dispute between the Chacham and Ben Zoma, which uh, appears in the Haggadah. And it's really a, a, actually a difficulty why this finds its place in the Haggadah. The Haggadah is uh, a discussion, or it should be a discussion of the mitzvah of, of Sipri at Siyas Mitzrayim. The mitzvah that we're coming to fulfill on Seder night is the mitzvah of telling the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. How does a halachic dispute about the parameters of the mitzvah of Zechiras Yitzias Mitzrayim, which find its way into that God, it seems to have no relevance to telling the story of the Exodus? That's a question. But the, if we, the question is actually much deeper because the Mepharshim asks, as we know, as we know on Seder night, there's a special mitzvah of Sipri Yitzias Mitzrayim the mitzvah which we have once a year to discuss the Exodus, to tell the story of the Exodus. The question is, according to Ben Zoyma, who, as we said, we pass the night Ben Zoyma, that there's a mitzvah of Zechir Sitzias Mitzrayim, every night there's a mitzvah to mention the Exodus from Egypt every night. So what is special about Seder night? How is this night different to any other night? According to, to the way that we rule like Ben Zoyma, there's a mitzvah to, to mention the Exodus every night. How is Seder night different to any other night? And the answer that the Mepharshim say is that the mitzvah on Seder night is, a, is an expanded version of this mitzvah. The Zechir HaSetzias Mitzrayim, which we have every night of the year, is just to briefly mention the Exodus. That's what we say in the end of the Shema. We just say, I am Hashem who took you out of Egypt. The mitzvah on Seder night is to, is to discuss and tell the story in, in, in all its detail. It's an expanded version of this mitzvah. But if that's the case, then it's even more difficult. Why are we mentioning the mitzvah of Zechir HaSetzias Mitzrayim on the night where we have the special mitzvah of Sipri HaSetzias Mitzrayim? Why are we mentioning the everyday mitzvah in, in the middle of the Haggadah, which is supposed to be discussing the unique special mitzvah of discussing the Exodus once a year, of telling the story in all its detail. It seems to be completely out of place. So I think the answer is as follows, and really what the, what the Balagod is conveying by including this passage is something really 
very vital to the essence of Seder night. And that's as follows. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels sad when Yom Tov is over. Yom Tov is uh, a time where we, we're inspired, where we're elevated, we feel uplifted. And then Yom Tov ends and it's just uh, Monday morning, a regular Monday morning. So how do we deal with this uh, descent into the routine and the mundane? So Rav, Rav Hutna, um, who was the great thinker, great Rosh Hashiva in America, he said the following statement, that a person shouldn't say that Yom Tov is over. A person should say that uh, we've gained a Yom Tov. I want to try to explain the depth of what he was coming to say. Each Yom Tov has its own special theme. Pesach is obviously about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Rosh Hashanah is about, Malchus is about proclaiming Hashem as our king. Shavuos is about Matan Torah, accepting the Torah. These are, each Yom Tov has its own unique um, special theme. But in fact, it seems a bit difficult. Is it just on Pesach where we think about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? As we said, we have a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim every day. Is it just on Rosh Hashanah where we have a mitzvah to proclaim Hashem as our king? We have a mitzvah every day of Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shamayim. When we say Shema, we proclaim Hashem as our king. So what's unique about Pesach? What's unique about Rosh Hashanah? What's unique about any of the Yom Tovim if the, th if the theme of, of each of these Yom Tovim are really not unique to that Yom Tov, but apply the whole year round? So the answer, I think, is obvious. That, yes, these themes, these ideas uh, are relevant the whole year round. But if we take a week out, we take a week during the year to focus and, and to emphasize these ideas, then when we think about these ideas the rest of the year, they become so much more meaningful. If, if we spend Seder night and Pesach thinking about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, thinking about uh, that what we what we experience in the Tzias Mitzrayim, that, that Hashem proved his existence, Hashem um, proved that he was intimately involved in the affairs of man, Hashem proved that the wicked are punished and the righteous are rewarded. If we think about, if we spend a week absorbing these ideas, then when we say um, during the year, when we each day we mention the Tzias Mitzrayim, that thinking about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that mentioning of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is so much more meaningful, so much more powerful. And if we spend um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur thinking about what it means that Hashem is our king, then when we say the words every day, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokim Hashem Echol, we proclaim Hashem as our king. So that that statement becomes so much more meaningful and so much more so much more powerful. And I think that's what the Bala Goda means that's what he's trying to convey by incorporating this passage, which is a discussion of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the everyday mitzvah, incorporating this passage into the Haggadah on Seder night. He, the Haggadah wants to tell you that before you embark on Seder night, before you embark on Pesach, and you uh, have a, 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 and, and you have the, the clarity in, in the Emunah in Hashem, which is what we're supposed to experience on, on Seder night, we're supposed to feel on Seder night and on Pesach, you should know, says the Bala Goda, that, that, that these ideas shouldn't be a distant memory when Pesach ends. No, there's a mitzvah each day of Zechiras Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. There's a mitzvah each day to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And those ideas that we absorb, the, in, the, the inspiration that we feel should continue and be felt every day when we mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Yom Tov, inspiring Yom Tov and uplifting Yom Tov, and that the inspiration that we feel from Pesach should accompany us the whole year round. I wish you all a good Yom Tov.